Welcome back to the It Takes Two podcast. We're really excited to be here. We have a great episode ahead. If you guys have been following along, make sure that you are leaving written reviews and five-star reviews, helping push the content out with the algorithm so that more people can benefit from relationship advice um, from a Christian perspective. Yeah, we're glad that you guys, the two crew are back joining us again. It's a great, going to be a great episode. It's going to be uh, talking about five rules for fighting fair. So we're excited about that. I uh, hope that you've had a great week. Hope your Friday is going good. We are currently, when the podcast comes out, we are going to be uh, on taking a vacation. Yeah, really excited. We're going to be going with my family to Arizona and it's going to be just some good quality family time, some time to rest and recoup. And um, it's supposed to be snowing at home. Oh, I was like, while we're in away. Arizona? No, while we're away. Oh, and that's a selfishly, I don't want it to. <laughs> Wait, is it really supposed to be snowing? Yeah, it it is supposed to be, I think, like Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday. Mm, wrong. Maybe a little bit. Not it, at all? No, it doesn't say at all. Then it changed and my prayers are working. <laughs> yeah, we love the snow. When we get back, though, it's going to be cold enough to snow. When we get back, we need to go to the snow. Yeah. it's We we uh, are excited about this vacation, and uh, I definitely need it to clear my head. It's been a busy, busy, busy last month, two months for us. So we're, we're going to be excited. So we hope that you're relaxing as well when this comes out. Uh, but before we get into the actual podcast we are going to do a would you rather segment yes i think these are always so fun and spencer always comes up with the craziest ideas but this time i had a couple to throw out there and because we're talking about five ways to fight fair i was like okay let's do a would you rather but of all the ways that kind of instigate fights <laughs> so the question is would you rather like you have a pet peeve if your spouse or the person that you're with, they do your pet peeve constantly, or would you rather whenever you play games with your spouse or your person that you're never able to win? I feel like some people do have spouses out there that they're like, they already do my pet peeve all the time. <laughs> you actually don't really do it a lot, but do what? some things. I don't like eating noises, and sometimes you have some noises. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. I... It's super minimal, but it happens. Like, it's only when it's completely silent, and I can't help that. <laughs> I I promise you. I always oh, give Adrian a hard time because she has this pet peeve, <laughs> this huge pet peeve of, uh, like, eating noises. And I think that's a normal pet peeve. Now. I feel like a majority... Like, I don't like eating noises, but it really, like, irritates Adrian to the point where she's going to murder somebody. And I always I, just for the record, I never have yet. <laughs> and I always laugh, though, because there will be some moments where you're eating loud and I just sit there and I smile at you and I stare. But you never look at me. It's not because I think it's like wrong. It just irritates me. Obviously, it's yeah. different if I do it than if someone else does it. Yeah. And so if it was me winning or always losing in games against you versus we're AJ. so competitive we i competitive. don't know if i can handle losing yeah i picked you. a pet peeve which i can't even i don't even know what my biggest pet peeve is that you that somebody does i can't even i don't know what that would be but i would pick that over losing i hate losing board games also because like i love you but you're a very uh you know sore winner <laughs> Like no. when Adrian wins, it's like, okay, this is the Adrian show for the next 10 minutes. And she's. Yeah, actually, what game was it? Oh, it was. Um, We talked to you guys about how we have trophies whenever we play Pictionary. And the other year when oh. all the girls won, I turned on We Are the Champions and played it around the living room. And it's not the first time that she's ever done that. So it's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's so on theme. How could you not? I would definitely. My dad actually has like one of those little ponies on a stick. And someone got it for him so that he could ride it around the house. Yeah, it's in won. it's in Adrian's blood. This uh, this this winning habit. So I would pick the pet peeve instead of losing. You'd rather have me have your biggest pet peeve that I do all the time. Yes, yes. Yeah, and you don't know what your pet peeve actually is. You mm -mm. just you're put on the spot and you don't know. No, I don't. I mean, you're so laid back. I don't have a lot of pet peeves. 
I feel like you do. You just got to think about it more. Okay, I'll think about it during the podcast. Come back to us with more. Yeah, I'm really competitive. And actually, when we're playing games, I will insist on being on Spencer's team just to prevent fights. Just because she wants to win. To prevent fights. We told you about how the first time you said I love you to me was because Mm -hmm. we were fighting over a game. And then he, you know, (laughs) took a low moment and made it better. Um, but my pet peeves. I am, the irony I can that, just be sent over my pet peeves. Yeah, the irony is that we were on the same team when that fight happened. So yeah, but you weren't. You weren't playing with me. You were doing whatever you wanted. Oh, I don't man. care if we ended up winning. It's rude. you do have a lot of pet peeves though. So you, which one would you pick? I, I know both would just. They're really really bad, but I have to pick. I'd rather lose to you. Yeah. I can see that. My pet peeves are just like... They're too strong. It's too strong. Yeah. We'd be fighting all the time. Yes. I, I can think of many pet peeves that I have. And if you had them all and did them a lot, I don't know if I could love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's... That would oh, not be what an evil best. laugh. That was an evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, w- I wonder what you guys would say would be your pet or which one you would pick. Pet peeves or always losing yeah tell us in the comments write in and um yeah i'd love to see the feedback maybe we'll do a poll this week and see what people have to say that'd be funny we're a split household with our would you rathers so i'm curious what you guys think Mm -hmm. fun all right well we um you know speaking on the topics of you know fighting and what how it breaks out um we wanted to talk about how to fight fair because the reality is there are going to be disagreements that you're going to have And what are the right parameters to make sure that you're still loving and respecting each other, even in disagreements? And I think that there are boundaries that you can have. And we've kind of talked about that a little bit before a few times. Um, But to be super clear and specific on how to do it the right way. Yeah. And so I I feel like, I don't know, everybody goes through seasons of, oh, we're arguing a little bit, maybe more than usual. And so... You know, and these are like, I don't know, these are like parameters because obviously you can't master it and we haven't mastered it. And we just try, it's about trying your best to stay within the the guardrails that you place within fighting. And so these are just five that we have. You feel free to take it if you want. Um, this is just has helped us to be able to come out of fights being better because I think that's the goal. Fights yeah. are inevitable, but you 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 grow and you learn and you get better from them. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Super good. All right. What is the first rule in fighting fair, would you say? Uh, so the first rule that we have down here is uh, attack the issue, not the person. I am just like laughing in my head so much right now that we're doing this podcast because I'm thinking of all the funny stories that we have of fighting <laughs> fighting and like. Well, here's one of the reason why we have funny stories is because like I'm a very like chill person and adrian is on the she likes the theatrics she loves the drama she's insane so (laughs) it's it's funny because we've had to learn how to basically coexist in in make each other extremes of like reactions yeah and and make each other feel heard and seen and so yeah there are a lot of funny stories of us um I'll but. tell people them like after the fact as like, oh, laugh at yourself and, and don't do what I did because I'm obviously an idiot. So, <laughs> but Adrian, yeah, it, I mean, like even sometimes we can it, tell some funny stories at the end, maybe okay. our best stories yeah. of um, when we've just taken it a little too far. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would be good. Because, like, you know what? I, maybe you haven't been there. Maybe um, God's really blessed you, but you know what? Sometimes I've just taken it a little too far and it's. It's actually really funny now because, you know, it's just sometimes past. I'll tell people stories and tell them myself like Spencer's so amazing. He really just he gives me a lot of grace. No, but there. Yeah, it's it, it's it's funny to see the different dynamics of how you are and how you interact with your person. And so you have to be able to take these and and change them and mold them into how you guys operate and how you guys fight and argue and so yeah the first one is attack the issue and not the person so i mean really what that boils down to is like you have to realize that 
fights bring up a heightened sense of emotion. And so I feel like when you bring up something that's irritating you or you guys are discussing, it's really easy to just like start throwing rocks at each other. And yeah. it's like, well, last week, you know, you did this. And well, now that we're talking about this and you start bringing up crazy things, but mm -hmm. you have to realize like there, you still love that person. You're still for them. And so um, a lot of times we watched this show and there's a line that has always stuck with me ever since it. And it's, yeah. I said more than I meant. And mm -hmm. I love that line because that, that can happen a lot in fights where you're just like, oh, I said more than I meant. So you have to be careful, I mean, about that of just like not attacking the person, but like just talk about what you're frustrated with. And I feel like a lot of that can stem from I'm going to like take this even further because I feel like you're not really hearing me. So I'm going to try to evoke more emotion out of you mm -hmm. just so that I feel like I'm being heard. And so I think recognize that in yourself that. Maybe they're not understanding you, but it, it doesn't mean that you need to escalate it more. Right. And I think when we talk about not attacking the person, something that comes to mind, too, is taking out the words, you know, always and never because you're yeah. talking about the yeah. way a person is versus the moment that you're upset about. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that that is always 100 percent of the time who they are. I think you're talking about a moment, not the person. Yes. So don't attack their character as a whole. Right. Attack the moment and pick apart maybe what could have been improved so and that's that's a good point too of like the verbiage because your words however you mean it like your words are very important in what you say and so it's like we even try very hard like it's not hey you're you are so unreasonable it's like hey you are acting unreasonable or yeah. you're acting this way not like you are because then you attach those labels and those identities onto you know, the other person. And yeah. I, and I think it like, how do you, how do you view fighting in an arguing is like, you should be viewing it as trying to solve a problem. But I think when emotions are in there and how, you know, you you start saying things back and forth, it turns away from solving a problem and it kind of turns into some like type of weird competition. Yeah, it really does. Of like wanting to be right. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of just lose sight of, of really what you guys were fighting for in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think when you're attacking the person, it just takes it to an, a lower level that really isn't going to accomplish anything. It's probably going to bring up a lot more issues and mm -hmm. and maybe make that person feel unsafe to have a, yeah. a different point of view than you so that they don't feel like they even want to fight with you because they don't feel safe in those conversations. Well, you know, like, you know, the worst parts about me and I would know mm -hmm. the worst parts about you because being there are no worst parts. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I meant. Um, but, you know, in a relationship, it's like you're so vulnerable with one another. So it's really easy to like point and poke at those vulnerable spots when you're upset with somebody because, you know, those pressure points. Well, your words weigh heavy because whatever you say, like you, I value you yeah, and you mean a lot to me. So if I think you have this perspective of me, I think the best way that you can articulate things is like, don't say you are, don't say always and never. And I think it's really important to say, this is how I feel, or you're mm -hmm. making me feel this way because your feelings can be valid, but it doesn't mean that like, you know, other things maybe more individualistically pointed at them are true, but like, this is the way I'm feeling. It doesn't mean that that's true, but it's making me feel this way. So you can understand mm -hmm my emotions right now and that brings even a lot of clarity especially like as a as the guy um and in the relationship is you know there's been times where we're we're arguing about something and like i truly am not trying to be a certain way i'm just trying to and then when i hear adrian say hey you're making me feel you know you're making me feel like you're not hearing me you're making me feel like you don't care and it's like oh i I realize, and a lot of times guys, you you don't realize kind of what you were saying, how weighty your words are. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can't you can't afford to just make flippant statements when you're when you're in the heat of the moment because you don't realize like oh that might be that to me that might seem like a five pound weight, but then like it's actually to her it's like two hundred pounds and it crushes her and then that's all she thinks about for the next two weeks and you're like wait what how are you because it's just your way especially as a guy as the leader of you know a family of a marriage. Um, as the head, you have a responsibility to how you say things and what you say and take that into account. Yeah, I think the biggest point on this first rule is just not taking cheap shots. Mm -hmm. You know, like 
<laughs> there was a time where Spencer and I were fighting and in front of people <laughs> and I just really wanted to make him pay. And so I was like, well, well, well you're ugly. <laughs> and it hurt his feelings it did. so bad, obviously. And of course, I wouldn't be with you if I thought you were ugly. Like, I yeah. love everything about you. It was the first time I ex ever experienced bullying in my life. <laughs> Came from my girlfriend. <laughs> I was like, why am I even saying this? Yeah, that was funny. I mean, it wasn't funny in the moment, but looking back, it is funny. I was, And I was like, don't ever say that to me in front of people again. I mean, I think don't say it ever, but especially <laughs> not in front of people. It was like, and you know what? You learn from experience and... Yeah. <laughs> Honey, I got experience. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so new, moving on to number two. Um, number two is never use the D word. And by D word, we mean <laughs> divorce. Divorce. I'm thinking of that, that skit. No, I don't know. Uh, Key, or, uh, Key and Peel in uh, Just Go With It, where the hairdresser. <laughs> divorce. He wants to divorce your head. <laughs> Because their hair looked terrible. But yeah, I mean, we don't, I mean, this is a pretty simple one. We're not going to spend a ton of time on it, but it's just literally, we've never, ever used divorce as a like argument point in conversations. And like, mm -hmm. we've just never, it's just been a value of ours and we stuck by it. Like we have never, even in our worst fight, we've never said divorce, even as a joke, even as like a flippant comment, like we've never used it. Yeah, I think it's just such a heavy threat and that's not going to get you a healthy resolve if you're threatening to leave someone. It doesn't make them feel safe and secure with you. And then like like I we said before, like your your words have a lot of weight. And if you're throwing around something like, well, if you don't want to be with me, someone else would like those kind of things yeah. are going to cause to sow seeds of doubt mm -hmm. in your person and even in yourself. Like, well, what's allowed? Right. Because if they treat me that way, someone else could treat me better. You know what? That's probably true. Mm -hmm. I think I could find someone better out there. So I think when you're sowing those seeds and it's, they're just words that that's what the enemy would want you to think. But yeah. I think words have weight. Of course. Yeah. There's power of life and death in the tongue. And that's scripture, baby. Mm -hmm, that's scripture. And I feel like a lot of times you don't even think about things until they get brought up in that way. And so it's like, oh, you you start considering possibilities when you open that that door with your words, with your actions, with how you think. And so that just can't, it, it's just a, a above reproach type of way of living as a couple. It's like that we, we would never even get close to the fence. So why mm -hmm. even say the word? Yeah. And I think even if this is something that you're having to walk through for other reasons, like a fight in an emotional conversation is not a way to bring up a topic like that yes like if this is something you're actually having to walk through possibly mm -hmm. you want to make the most rash decision that's biblically based that's with a lot of counsel and if you're just bringing this up in a fight like it's just emotion emotionally charged decisions are probably not the most well thought out they're probably not the best for you so yeah i think it's just pretty simple like we just don't we don't say that word yeah, it's probably yeah, probably not the best idea to throw that out the first time in an argument. If that's a reality of you know what you guys are facing, then it's like yeah, you should be in a place where you have a level head, where you're able to maybe counsel, maybe some you know something there that kind of allows a level of boundary to what you guys are talking about. But yeah, in the heat of the moment, it's like no, that there's nothing good that could possibly come out of just dropping that on somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Not for that. Not for that. No, thank you. Okay. Number three is respect the process of one another. So what does that mean? Yeah. I feel like this has probably been our biggest learning lesson mm -hmm. because the way that we both process is so different. Yeah. Sometimes I just, I really just need to sit and think and spend time in my thoughts. Yeah. Like actually process what I want to say, how do I actually feel? If I really think about it, like we'll be sitting in the car and I could just be silent and it's not just because I'm ignoring him. It's because I really want to be thoughtful in how I explain how I'm feeling, why I'm feeling that way. And even for me to understand my own feelings. Mm -hmm. So I need time to process that where for you, I think that you're 
a lot more, you know, and that's true for a lot of guys. They're really solution oriented. Yeah. So you just want to, you know, say, I'm sorry, I'm done with it. And I'm like, well, if I say I'm sorry, I also really want to mean it mm-hmm. and I want to move forward. And so am I emotionally ready to do that? And that that might take time. And now, you know, there's going to be some time constraints on that. I'm not going to take two <laughs> weeks to have my space. And really it's process. been two years. It'd probably be throughout the end of the day or maybe we sleep on it. Um but I think you have to respect each other's processes because you want to both come into this discussion in the healthiest way. So if you're ready and I'm not ready, you're not going to get the best me. Yeah, or if I'm right. ready and you're not ready, then I'm not going to get the best you. And I think that ha- that's how you safeguard and protect yourself from saying things that you don't mean. Yeah. I mean, that's all. That's all very, very... <sighs> good points and i agree yeah it's just everybody's different i'm i'm always like let's solve this right now you know just tell say how you're feeling but it's also interesting because yeah it's a kind of a uh a way for adrian to also not just like gather your thoughts but to protect me because like you're saying it's like i have to process and understand what i'm saying because i how it affects the overall conversation and how the the argument goes forward. And so it's like, sometimes if we didn't wait, you know, it would, it would just get worse rather than getting better. And so that's, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what we had to learn. Cause like, I am such a, like, he would just just be like, Hey, let's talk about (laughs) it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Like, 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 leave me alone. Yeah. You're like, I just need time. And I'm like, okay, well, how how much time? Five minutes, 10 minutes. I'm ready now. What are we waiting for? Yeah. So that's, that's been a big learning curve for us is I have to realize, okay, let's take a step back. And then Adrian has to realize, okay, may I have to give Spencer something in -hmm. terms of, Hey, just give me. Or explaining why I need time. Yes. Give me some space. Not like, ugh, leave me alone. Like, okay, what do you need? Yeah. And so I, I've been like, okay, you know, if, if we're arguing, it's like, I have to ask her, okay, are you ready to talk about this or do you need some time? And then she'll tell me I'm, I need some time. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I'll just disengage for a little bit and let her gather her thoughts. Yeah. And I think something that we've also, um, journeyed through is if I need time and I tell you I need space and you're respecting that, I can't be mad, but I'm like, why isn't he pursuing me? (laughs) <laughs> Why isn't he chasing me down? If I told you I need space and I'm tired and I'm mad at you, why aren't you coming and groveling at my feet? Yeah, yeah. You know, like that yeah. was something that used to really annoy me because I'm like, fight for me. But I'm telling him, leave me alone. Like, what do you want him to do? You you can't expect them to be a mind reader and you can't manipulate someone yeah. saying that you want something when you really don't. Like, yeah, like <laughs> I do remember that. It's like, it's like, Hey, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be around you. And then she, you know, you get up and you go upstairs. I'm like, okay. You know, and then I start watching TV and then she texts me. She's like, what the heck? <laughs> I'm like, what? And I think what like is? for a while it was like, you don't even care about me. You don't care that we're fighting. And, he, and he's like, no, I'm trying to respect what you're saying and right. not pester you. Cause I've, I've done that and that didn't work out. So now I'm trying to honor what you're saying and then you're mad at me for honoring what you're saying. So that's why you need to, when you're actually having these conversations, you have to actually mean what you're saying. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just say things and throw it around. Yeah. That's a good point. So rule number four is embrace compromise. And this is actually really hard to do because if you feel really justified and feel that you're right, I just want you to agree with me. But sometimes there has to be a little bit of give, a little bit of take. Yeah. And I think this boils like this is like humility, you know, and and I this is something that I really had to work through being in a relationship. It's like because I'm like, I'm always right. Like I I have the best perspective. Like how, how come you can't see things the way that I see them? But it's just a matter of realizing like, OK, first of all. I don't know everything and Adrian does have better perspectives on some things and she and she is right on a lot of things so it's understanding okay even take the emotion out of it and it's like okay you're not right all the time but also it's the aspect of some things are more important to you than mm-hmm. it is to me and some things are more important to me than it is to you and it's like if you have a preference on you know the way that and I'm just trying to think of an example off off the top of my head but like it let's say you have a preference 
and you think a specific way about uh, something that I'm doing. And I'm like, well, it's not that big of a deal. And if you say, well, it's a big deal to me, yeah. then for me, I'm like, oh, okay. Even though I don't think, I don't care, I could care less, I have to respect how it makes you feel. And that's yeah. what, I feel like that's what it means with compromise. It's like laying your preferences down if it means more to the other person. Yeah, and I think that when you're when you're talking about like fighting, there is no winner and loser if someone's right or someone's wrong right. or someone yeah, yeah, yeah. compromises, you need to win as a couple. Mm-hmm. So when you think about like, oh, I didn't get my way and like he won, I'm not going to let him win. I'm going to get what I want. Then you're not thinking about this the right way. Like I'm right. I'm right. That's just not a way to go into it. You have to go into it wanting to hear their side, wanting to make things right. And if you're not willing to compromise, you're probably just not going to get there. Yeah, it just show, I feel like it shows the selfishness of who you are. If, you, if you're not willing to compromise in a relationship, you're going to have a miserable relationship in marriage. Like if you're like, no, I'm not, you know, why would I, why would I lay down anything that I want to do based off of somebody else? Well, that's like the yeah. whole point. Yeah, you have to lay down your pride couple. and your preferences. Yes, sometimes. yes. And so I think that's like a good internal check with a lot of people of like, if your husband or your wife is annoyed that you do something and it's like, well, does it, is it actually that big of a deal that I continue doing it? You know, the, the example that I actually just thought of is, um, when I, when I graduated interns, I smoked cigars, not like frequently. I'm not like a chain cigar smoker, but okay. I, what? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> yeah. I don't smoke them all the time, but like, you know, if, some of my, me and my buddies, every once in a while, we'll go smoke cigars. And Adrian, when she found out, she was like, that is like the grossest thing I've ever heard of. Which she didn't know when we were dating. And I was like, well, yeah, but like, it's not, you know, it's not cigarettes. It's not marijuana. Like we're talking about cigars here. And then my, my main argument point was like, um, C.S. Lewis smoked cigars. Okay. So I think it's okay for me to smoke cigars. Like I care. And that's literally what she said. Like I care. But we had, she's come around to the, uh, the idea now she tolerates it i want she doesn't like it she tolerates it but in the moment it was like hey i don't want you doing this and i was like okay like, it was like a value thing because i've yeah. been triggered by a previous relationship where yeah. you know there were things that i didn't know and it was not about cigars but it was something else yeah. that you know made me think of that and i was like okay it may not even be this issue but know that i'm sensitive to that mm-hmm. and it makes me feel uncomfortable. And maybe we could have talked about that besides you just assuming that I'd be okay with it. Because also, yeah. it's not like a normal and like consistent thing. Right. No, yeah. And so I could have argued like the merit of cigars and why and all this, but, you know, it really did upset her. So I was like, okay, like I, if you if you don't want me to, like if it means that much to you, it, I, I don't have to smoke cigars. And so that was like a compromise. And it's, you know, obviously come around a little bit, but that's just kind of an example of like, does it really mean that much to keep doing something or or to hold on to something that you think is true so bad if it means so much to the other person and it really doesn't mean that much to you? Yeah. Is it really worth it? Is and it I worth mean, it? Yeah, it was. And, and now I've compromised a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, and I will say, just because you're compromising arguments doesn't mean you're compromising your values. Right. Right. You can still hold fast to your values and, but you are a unit and you are, uh, you make decisions together. And so because of that, it's going to be a joined, you know, preference and, and value system where you've learned how to interact with one another. And I think that's why it's so important that when you're with someone, your values are aligned. Yes. Cause yeah. that's something that's, you know, that just, that's the makeup of who you are and like the foundation of what you believe in. And so if you're compromising those things for someone else, maybe they're not the right person for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you, if you constantly find yourself tr- having to compromise and it gets exhausting, then it's like, yeah, maybe this isn't the best relationship. To I'm be talking in. to dating people, of course, only. Yes. Yes. Of course. Good preface. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Number five, wrapping it up with always have a resolution. And this is important for us because I think it's easy in fights to be like, ah, well, you know what? Oh, okay, whatever, whatever. And then you walk away and it's like, well, 
nothing got solved. And then, you know, later you kind of forget about it and it blows over and you just move on. But that's just like not the right way to go about things because you need to have a game plan going forward and you need to have a period at the end of an argument so you know, okay, now we're moving on. Yeah, it's not just about saying this is how I feel, this is how you feel, this is what I think, this is what you think. Okay, going forward, this is how we will address things in this area so that we don't come to this place again. Right. It's like, okay, well, going forward, I won't say that that way because now I know that it hurts your feelings. Or going Mm -hmm. forward, I know that this is important to you, so I won't do this. And so in that way, it makes each person feel heard. And it again, it like brings you back to being, you know, a couple and a unified force and having the same ideas in going forward. The worst thing I feel like is if you just like, you know, don't resolve anything ever and then it just blows over. And that's when, you know, those little arguments, little fights you know, blow up one day into this giant argument and all of a sudden 20 things are brought up and it's just like this chaotic mess. And it's because you're sweeping things under the rug. Mm -hmm. If you're not addressing when things make you upset, if you're not addressing how things make you feel, then why would anyone change? Right. And honestly, it's like, I think that resolutions are beyond just, hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgive you, I forgive you. Okay, but how do we get better from this? What's what's the solution going forward? Mm-hmm. You know, where's the, where was the disconnect? Where was the misstep in addressing that? What needs to change? What needs to change? Because the idea is like, you guys shouldn't be fighting all the time. You know, yeah. relationships should get, you should, as you learn one another, and as you spend life with one another, like you should be able to start to uh, understand each other better. And that avoids misunderstandings, which leads to fights. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're like fighting every single day, my thought is like, uh, you guys must not be resolving this because the same things keep coming up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes as you're getting to know someone, those can come up more frequently because mm-hmm. you didn't realize, oh, I didn't know that this upset you or you thought this about the situation or, you know, I didn't realize that this was very important to you. So, you know, that may happen, but if it's becoming a trend and it's really consistent that's a that's a yellow flag for me yeah. but in that's, a dating relationship i mean that's like a win-win though in the sense of okay you win because you find a resolution and go forward or you win because you realize that this isn't going to work yeah and so it comes it's 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 a you know a t in the road where it's like hey this is either going to work or it's not but i don't want to go on forever in an unstable unhealthy relationship totally you know, sometimes it's better to end things than, than go on and... You don't want to spend your life walking on pins and needles with someone. Yeah. That sounds exhausting. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. So, um, yeah, I mean, those are those are some five easy, practical, you can apply them tips on fighting fair because fights will happen. They're inevitable. But it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be the stigma of typical fighting in a relationship. Yeah. You can learn from wisdom. Or you can learn from experience. And Mm -hmm. our preference is that you wouldn't have to go through these things, learning them by experience, but that you can take the wisdom of these five points, uh, have these rules set in place so that when those conversations come up, you already know where your boundaries are and you already know what your goals are. If you don't have those set in place, what's going to keep you in bounds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Do you want to go over the uh, segment for next week? Do you have any funny stories that you wanted to share? Oh, funny stories. Oh, any man. crazy Adrian stories? Or maybe, were you, have you ever been crazy? Uh, me? Yeah. In a fight? Anything that, that uh, would make us giggle a little bit? You know, I, I mean, I have tons of Adrian stories. Yeah, there's a lot of those. Um, but let me, let me, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Well, there was one time, and I, I mean, it's just off the top of my head, but um, there's... Where you, she got so mad at me that, well, she was more in her feels than mad at me, but she was very upset. And so I, I was like, we were talking and we were talking things out. And then all of a sudden I was like, where, all, where did Adrian go? And I'm like, what the heck? And I'm like, the dogs are right here. And I'm looking around and I, <laughs> I don't know where this is going. 
and I and I try and I I was leaving. I already had plans to leave somewhere else. So I was just trying to be like, hey, communicate. Hey, I know that we're not done with this. I'm gonna go. I'm coming back, and we'll, we can finish. So I'm like looking for her. I'm like, what the heck? I try to go into our closet, and it's just dunk. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, hello. And are you in there? And you're like, you're like, yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, are you okay? Because I'm like, are you the lights okay? Are the off. lights are off. Are you okay? You're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. I just remember I'm going out. I'll be back. And you're like, okay. And I closed the door and I left. And I was like, she just in the closet in the dark <laughs> by herself. Sulking. And I didn't know this at the time, but she also had her sunglasses on. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Theatrix is out of 10, folks. It is out of 10, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a funny one. Um, let's He's see. like, I'm still going. No, there's no... I mean, you. I feel like you You act like you are some crazy dramatic person, but there's only a few funny stories of drama in there. Yeah. I, I, I can't even think of another one off the top of my head, which you is a good thing. It's just funny. It we is. We can funny. all laugh at ourselves. And it's like honestly, I'm like I know Adrian is that type of person, and so I, honestly, I let her be herself. To and all I, those big personalities out there, I let her have. Yeah, I feel you. But you know what? You gotta get a rain on yourself because you're yeah. gonna, you're kind of crazy. I let I let you have your moment in the spotlight of drama, and you know, it's like I feel like you imagine. I'm like. Uh, yeah, I feel my like life <laughs> is so tragic. Have you guys seen the videos, like their TikToks and their reels, and it's like listening to taylor swift let's go back like yeah. you're, you're in like a rainy next to a window like oh, yeah my yeah. life's so depressing and it's like actually i have a really great husband but this song has me in my feel so i'm gonna act like my life is tragic next time that's so me next time you're being that way where you're just sad i'm just gonna start playing a song in the background <laughs> <laughs> what's the soundtrack to this moment right now oh man. amazing yeah you don't have any stories about me you're pretty you're pretty tame yeah i'm boring thank god we're not both the same yeah, because be. that would be explosive yeah it would be pretty feisty there's only room there's for only one room of for us one. only true. one diva and that's me baby that is true okay so next week we are um doing a fun segment and that's guys and girls questions we're doing a tell all episode yes. so yes Girls, if there's anything you've ever wanted to ask a guy, like, why do guys do this? Or what does it mean when a guy's doing this? Ask. And Spencer is going to ask all, answer all of your questions. I shall. For our tell all episode. And guys, if there's anything you want to know about girls, you know, similar vibe. What does it mean when girls do this? Why isn't she responding to yep, me? Yep. You know, whatever it may be, whatever your heart desires, ask away. And we are going to get through as many questions as we can. But I think it's always so interesting because you want to know, like, what goes through a guy's head when he's doing this or when this yeah. happens, you know, or what's a guy's perspective on girls who do this, you know? Yeah. I think from a, a healthy Christian perspective, what do we have to say about that? And yeah. I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. It'll be. Yeah, it'll be a fun segment. And I'm curious to see what questions people will ask. So we will do that. It'll be great. It'll be awesome. Can't wait for next week. Um, but as a reminder to you guys, make sure if you are watching at the end to leave a like on the video, leave a like on the podcast, subscribe, leave a written review for us and just, you know, reach out to us on social media. Let, let us know what part of the episode that you guys enjoyed. Let us know if you have any questions. And as always, we love you to crew. You guys have the absolute best. Thanks for being a part of the podcast and we will see you next week. Cheers.